I had no interest in this model until I realized this. Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. Everybody say thank you to David, the new Guitar Day King. He graces us with the presence of the 2024 limited edition 58 ES335 reissue. What's so exciting here? We have tons of 335s on the market. So I just decided to let this one go, but after a couple of days and looking at them, I realized there's something different about these. Look at our fretboard here. It does not have binding. 335 should have binding. However, apparently in 1958, the very first year of the ES335, the early ones did not have the binding. So cool. I learned something about vintage semi hollows that I didn't know before, and I get to experience a custom shop reissue. So it must be something similar to the Les Pauls. When they were first introduced, their first full model year of 1952, very early ones also have the unbound rosewood fretboards. The bridge pickup also has a different screw set. I've always found that cool and would love to have a reissue of that particular model. So I would imagine the diehard 335-58 fans are appreciating this release in a similar way. Even though taking away binding is removing a premium feature to a guitar. What a strange world we live in when it comes to reissuing vintage specs. Now the other reason why I go to the custom shop for stuff like this is neck profiles like holy cow this neck is chunky. <laughs> I have never played a baseball bat 335 before so I'm amped for this. But besides the limited edition standpoint, what other reissue specs can we expect on these? Well, you got the long droopy nose pick guard. That's right, the early ones have this really long guard. So modern ones will cut off right here at the pickup, but this one goes all the way down to the bridge. That's just one of those quirky specs that you're gonna appreciate if you like the vintage ones. And we even have a reissuing of the vintage style strap buttons, the little white plastic ones. But the next thing that I didn't realize about these is that it is a true limited edition. This isn't just a new offering of a 58 free issue. They're only making 130 of each flavor, meaning a total of 390. So first Gibson will try to tempt you with their lovely tri-burst, which as its name implies is a three-tone sunburst. You got that yellow into the red into the dark black. This one will run you $6,499. But if you have more expensive tastes, for $8,000, you can have the Dirty Blonde or the Faded Tobacco Sunburst colorway. I might be thinking, hey, Gibson, you're really going to charge me a $1,500 premium just for colors? No, it's actually a, a strange thing about this run. They're all Murphy Labs, but this one is light aged, whereas the other two are heavy aged. So you're paying for the aging treatment. The history has a tendency to forget those price differences and things usually end up evening out on the used market. If you're looking for a 335 to enjoy that might appreciate in value, maybe you could check out one of these. But as far as how this one was aged, if you catch it in the light just right, you do have some light finish checking. I'm noticing lots of dents and dings up along the sides, especially over there. But every example is going to be a little bit different. Like this one has some edge wear along the holly veneered headstock, as well as some dings on the back. And very shallow ones on the back of the neck. You don't really feel them while you're playing. They're just there for the cosmetic parts. And oh, would you look at that? They even rounded over our headstock. I'd personally call that more of a medium age than light age, but hey, that's just me. But besides our guitar, we get the Lipton reissue style case. Got that cool brown exterior with the clasps and a single latch. And then it's adorned with all this case candy. The pre-pack checklist, reissue hang tag, Gibson app, strings, all that other good stuff. Some more reissuing of the old case candy, Mr. Dealer card, etc. Silica packet. They ship the guitar with two switch tips. I'm not sure if this is a vintage thing, but the amber one that was in the case is a significantly different style than what was on the guitar. It's physically smaller and less wide. You tell me which one looks better, white or amber? I personally like the styling of the white one better, so I'll leave it like that. But we also have our COA booklet, one of those cool Murphy aged ones. Now it's not actually finished checked, it's just printed design. But hey, this is actually rather cool. It's a reissuing of the big dealer sheet when the 335 was first introduced. We'll give you that there so you can pause and read if you would like. And then we can see our serial number over here. I'm not sure if they go in order or what they're doing, but I would assume they all start with A and then 8 for 1958 reissue, four for 2024, and this is a production sequence. But you can read the rest of our stuff right there. And for historical preservation and original price hang tag. So far, I'm 
really impressed with this. That neck profile is something I've never experienced on this body shape. So let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to a playing sample. Found a couple of other things underneath the hood, so let's start with the pickups. We've got unpotted custom buckers in here. Unpotted means they don't wax pot them. These can squeal if you try to use super ultra high gain. Now you might ask yourself, why wouldn't they do that? It's because unpotted pickups have a different tone to them, but they just have the patent applied for decal on the back side of each. The cavities are rather fascinating. Normally when we look at a 335 on the bench, there's a big hole cut out of it. But this one is completely solid here. They do not chop the center block at all. Again, I'm not the most knowledgeable on 50Z as 335s, but that must be part of their specs. The reason why most of them have this area chopped out is because that's where they feed the electronics through to fish them into these locations. And like, they can use the F hole to help them a little bit. But since this guitar does not have a backplate, that's the only way they had to put that in there. Cause you're not fitting a wiring harness through a small drill run. For a 335, this is ridiculously clean for Gibson. Usually these are all splintery and not that nice. So that's the spruce bracing you're seeing right here. And then these are pressed guitars. So you've got a maple poplar maple sandwich on the top. You've got that same thing along the edge and the back. And then they press it to form the arch top. So that same process continues underneath our center block, which is made of maple. We'll just appreciate these routes from other areas as well. Here it is with our neck pickup cavity. You can check out that long neck tenon. Oh, with the pickups back in, they read 8.08k ohms in the bridge position, 8 in the neck, and the middle just for fun, a little more than 4. got an ABR1 stop bar tailpiece setup, and that bridge is looking like this. Keep in mind this is a non-retainer wire version, so if you flip this upside down, you're gonna lose all your saddles. And of course we have that lightly aged, lightweight aluminum tailpiece. And your neck has a volume and tone, your bridge has a volume and tone, three-way toggle switch, output jack on the front. We also have the pointers on the knobs, be careful, they can be sharp. Got those nice reissue style golden knobs. But inside the Ethel, we've got the model as well as our serial number on our Gibson sticker. Now we can check out the pick card. It looks extra strange when you have it off the guitar. It is so long. But here's what the back looks like. Looks like they just melt some plastic on the back to attach the bracket. That continues down halfway between the tailpiece and the bridge. Now we'll just kind of run over it with the light. You can actually tell it has quite a bit of finish checking. It's just not really standing out in your face. It also has a very mild VOS treatment to it, so that's kind of the gunk that they put on it to make it not look as shiny. You could polish that off if you wanted it to look a little bit shinier. But as far as the aging jobs go, I will say they're getting better and more convincing. This really does feel like an old guitar. Now we'll have to see if it sounds like an old guitar. But what's really exciting about this launch to me is the fact that there was a light aged and a heavy aged. I really want to see them go back to also offering a non-aged version for those of us who don't want to pay the premium. Lately, there's been a real absence of that when it comes to the limited edition guitars. Now we can move on to that chunky mahogany neck with a rosewood fretboard. I went ahead and conditioned this, but it is unbound with dot inlays. 335 guys are weird. They prefer dot inlays over the 60s style small blocks. I think it just comes down to vintage tradition. Looking at the side of the board, you can see how tinted the lacquer is on this, because that's yellowed. But our nylon nut measures 1.71 inches, increasing to about 2.09 by the 12th. And it doesn't disappoint, 0.95 first fret neck depth and about 1.05 by the 12th. Here's a visualization of that neck, first fret, 12th fret. This is a proper baseball bat. If that's what you're after, you're gonna be really happy. So if you've had a 57 or a 58 reissue Les Paul, essentially the same neck. Now we can move on to the face of the headstock, another area where you can tell just how tinted the lacquer is. Cause that's still a white mother of pearl. It's just the clear coat over top of it that has been yellowed. That same thing is true on vintage guitars. I love the way that they've aged the tuner tips to match that, that must be tough to do. The cool thing about the aging on the side is it's actually exposing the Hollywood veneer, but it seems they roughed it up more so on this edge, but just a little bit over here. Then they kind of cooled off on this ledge, but our truss rod is perfectly fine. And here's a quick look at our wide beveled edge cover. Moving on to the backside here, you can see it's got some light figuring to it. It's subtle enough that you get to appreciate it in person. That's pretty cool. We can take a second to appreciate the aging job back here. Again, light VOS treatment and they just lightly roughed it up. 
I would say you especially notice it right here, like where your belt buckle would be. There's a look at the white strap button. And here's another thing I didn't really know to expect. The neck is actually a dark brown color. It's close to a dark back gold top, but I would say just a tad bit lighter. And I bring that up because you get this kind of cool cross section between your brown rosewood fretboard and the brown neck. They're slightly different hues, so it just gives you some more colors to look at. We're rocking single line, single ring, vintage Cluson style tuners and no serial number on the back because it's in the F hole. All said and done, not too bad of a weight, seven pounds, 11 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this 58 reissue sounds. I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed this guitar. It has a real certain resonancy to it. The whole neck and guitar vibrates at the same time. I had somebody leave a joking comment, hey Trogler, that's just a really well-built guitar. Trust me, I've had a lot of guitars and not all of them, regardless of how well you build them, have that whole resonancy thing to it. Are all these gonna be like this? I can't guarantee it, but I can say, this is one of my favorite 335s that I've played in recent memory. It might not be my 
favorite finish, but you know, for 1500 bucks less, <laughs> I would definitely live with this because it's plenty good and I prefer the slightly less aged versions anyways. So if you're interested in being the next owner of this one, nah, sorry, it's a new guitar day. If you're interested in having your guitar featured on the show before you get it, you can find out more information on my website. But overall, I think if you're in the market for a 335 and you have custom shop pricing, definitely consider one of these if you like the big neck profile. I'm really glad I gave this one a chance. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.